Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a video so many of you have requested. A video about chess psychology. Now, what actually is chess psychology? I've broken down this video into three parts of chess psychology. The first part is going to be before or after the game is played. That basically means what to do when you're playing higher rated players, what to do when you play lower rated players, and talking about ELO anxiety. Then after that, we're going to be talking about during the game itself, recovering from mistakes and dealing with the emotions of the opening, middle game, end game, and so on. And last but not least, we're going to talk about big picture, how to deal with tilt, anger, progress, stagnation, when to take a break, meditation, over the board practices, and all those good things. Whichever part you're interested in, there will be a timestamp on the video player, and I've included as many examples from my own personal games as possible. Let's go. So as I said, in the first part of this video, we're going to be talking about before or after the game, specifically that opponent element, and are you playing a higher rated player, are you playing lower rated player, and etc, etc. So, when I play a stronger player, me personally, I always think like this, just do your best, and if you lose, it doesn't really matter because you played a stronger player, so you might as well do something wild. You shouldn't think that way. Ultimately, they will be a bit more skilled than you, but losing still should not really be an option. You still should do your best and don't play any differently than normal. This is a game I played in 2016 uh, at the Millionaire Chess Open, and it was against Lazaro Brazon Batista, formerly Cuban number one, former 2700, and the opening isn't the most important part, but right here... We just have a very casual position, right? Like, it, my opponent played an English opening, I played a Dutch, kind of looks like a King's Indian. And, you know, the game before this, I actually had defeated a Grandmaster, and I was feeling kind of, you know, hyped. So what I did here is I just played the move G5, which by itself doesn't look like a very bad move, but it also is, it, it's actually terrible. And my opponent just punishes it immediately with a pawn break F4. And it might not become so obvious why this position is so kind of, like, bad for black, but it's basically losing. Like, my position all of a sudden is hanging by a thread, my opponent is threatening to rip it open, and after some transformation, I was just very clearly worse, and I ended up losing the game. My logic for getting aggressive, rather than just finishing my development, was, oh, well, he's GM, you know? So maybe if I make it weird and wild, like, I could beat him. What? No. So if you're, like, 1300 and you're playing a 1600... No, don't think like that. What you need to do when you play higher rated players, be solid. But some of you have other problems. You're too passive. At the end of the day, that is one thing we all have to think about. Don't worry about the rating. Play on focus mode on chess.com or Lee Chess or wherever you play. Hide the rating if it helps you. Don't worry, because if you wanna be a rating, like 1300 and you're 1100, you cannot have respect for that rating. Okay, that rating is something you wanna be. So go and get it. Now for this next example, we're taking a look at actually the opposite. What do you do when you're the stronger player? So when I'm the stronger player, actually, I don't just sit back. My coach, Wojciech Miranda from Poland, actually one of the only coaches I've ever worked with, told me, dude, you gotta relax. Don't force the issue because you take too many risks. Here's a game I played uh, in an invitational tour tournament in Edmonton um, in Canada. And it was a London against somebody rated about 180 points, 200 points lower than me. And what I did during this game is I just went crazy. Not with that move, but watch. Watch what I start doing on the king side. Like, I go in here, I like make this terrible trade to activate my opponent's bishop, and I just go with some big attack. Oh, I'm gonna destroy this guy. He's terrible. He's also, you know, he, he's an older guy. You know, he's not gonna calculate as well as me. And then as the game was going on, he just played a fantastic game. Like, he completely neutralized me. I ended up just having to bail. I have, like, very, like, limited attacking chances here. And then he just trades and plays Rook I have no attack. But because I have no respect for the elo, I play all, like, weird moves trying to create some play. And then I put my king on c3. And then he just goes on a counterattack. He starts counterattacking me, and I get low on time, and I end up blundering, and he just shreds open my king, and I end up losing. Terrible. This was like the, the lowest rated player I lost to in two months' time during this game. So this is a couple of years ago now, 2018, I believe, or two, 2018 or 16. Yeah, like, it's been a while, but... You have to do the same thing when you play lower rated players. Don't fear them. Don't worry about losing points to them. Just play chess. Take a little bit less risk maybe when you play lower rated players because if you complicate the position looking to uh, knock them out and 
why they could they could strike back just like in this game my opponent was 22 you know 50 and i was 2400 he still he still cracked me so i wasn't playing the board i was playing the elo that's what i was doing so last but not least i'm gonna go full screen for this for the dramatic effect elo anxiety period y'all deal with this you reach a new peak or you get very close you get scared you don't want to play anymore right or oh my god i'm playing someone who's like 100 points higher than me whatever the whole point of this entire segment of this video is to tell you stop worrying about that crap stop it if you have any plans to play chess longer than like two days five years ten years you're gonna get to where you're going and where you want to be if you follow the process there's gonna be ups and downs guys i was 2460 blitz like two months ago i just got 2830 okay if you've been at a rating you deserve to be at that rating just because you've dropped 100 points. You got a goal? Stop having respect for that goal, all right? Let's move on to the second category of the video. So this entire next segment is called During the Games Themselves. And this is probably the most important, although that first part was important, and so is the part after that. I mean, all my videos have good content in them, I like to think. So, number one, do not evaluate positions emotionally. What does that mean? You calculate something, don't go, oh, that looks scary. What? No, is it better for you or not? Is it, is it good for you? C board doesn't care about how you feel. Number two, overcoming mistakes. It's not the first mistake that kills you, it's the second mistake. Don't get too hyped up and play obvious moves. I'm gonna give you an example all in one game from a match that I played a couple of hours ago against international master Roberto Molina from Brazil. You know, I played an opening which surprised him. And already as the game was moving on, I could tell he was a little bit, you know, he wasn't reacting in the best way. And I was rolling, I was trying to get momentum and play quickly. And I came up with this cool idea to sacrifice a pawn to open up the position. And I was like really hyped during the game itself, okay? And I was just popping off moves. I'm like, I'm up. there's no way I lose this game. He's so dead, like I, I totally got this. So first of all, um, right here I missed a win. Like knight takes pawn is just winning because pawn takes, bishop takes. It's just straight up a fork. So, like, I didn't even see that. I only saw it after. And then, you know, I I'm, like, rolling. I'm popping off all these moves. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take his... I'm going to play rookie one. I'm going to take his bishop. I'm going to play a boom, boom. And mentally, I just, you know, I'm playing all these moves. And I'm like, I know he's going to go there. So, I'm just going to bust out this move. And I do, like, in one second. And then he goes here. I'm like, wait a minute. That's a problem. Because now he's going to go knight d4. I don't want a queen trade. I'm down a pawn. I need to like keep the momentum going. So I'm like, bam, 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 check, bam. Wait, I just traded all my pieces. I have no lead in development. I'm about to lose a pawn. Uh, uh-oh. And within 15 moves, I lost the game. Like he just consolidated and took two pawns and killed me. So what happened? Number one, I got too emotional. You could get too emotional in a, in a negative way. You could be like, oh, I'm so bad. Oh my God. I can't believe I blundered 17 games ago and now it's effect. So you're going to blunder. Okay. You're going to make mistakes. All right. Stop pretending like you're going to play perfectly. You're going to blunder. Stop getting so upset about it. Let me be the one to tell you. You're going to make mistakes. Don't get so upset. And also don't get too hyped. But overcoming mistakes. At this point, I should have relaxed. This is, of course, the, the, the wrong move. Here, knight d5 is just winning on the spot. Like I could have... But because I got too excited, I played. Now at this point, take a breath. This move is the move that lost me the game. Or at least lost me all my advantage. If I had just paused and went, you know, this is actually not so scary because I don't have to trade the queen. And then I have a long-term advantage. But I was so, I just go, 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 go. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Blah, blah, blah. And, then, and then I ended up losing. So... It's the first mistake will set you back. Here's a good analogy from the book Art of Learning by Josh Weitzkin, uh, former chess prodigy and Tai Chi champion. This is what he said. He said, pretend you're crossing the street, okay? You almost get hit by a car. You start yelling at the car instead of going back to the sidewalk, and while you're yelling at the car, the second car actually does hit you, not almost hits you, it hits you, right? That is, the, th that is what I have to look at here. Now for this next one, we're covering a couple of other topics within, again, during the game itself. This is a game against Grandmaster Viktor Mikhailevsky, uh, a game that I played also in that Edmonton tournament, actually, funny enough, a couple games ago, that game against Ian Findlay. Um, this is uh, something that I want to call um, overthinking. So a lot of us will overthink a position, or we, we just kind of, our brain gets foggy. We don't 
And that's all about the chess thought process. So in this position, my opponent played b5. I struck back with g5, and here he played take, I took, and then he played rook c1, right? And this was like a 90 minute game. At this point, I spent 15 minutes calculating. I was like, okay, I'm gonna take. He's gonna take, I can take, or here, I'm like, all right, take, take, do I go rook d2, do I go fg, blah, 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 blah. Except this position is losing. If I just look for a check, rook d1 check is just a tactic. It just wins. That's why you always need to look at checks, captures, attacks. Just scan them because you never know. This is winning because if rook takes rook, I take the queen. And if he doesn't take me, I take his queen anyway. And then there's a rook behind, just completely winning. He played rook c1 and my, I'm such an idiot. I sat there for 15 minutes before I took the bishop. He must have thought I was just... And then, of course, you know, and what ended up happening now was I had two minutes for the rest of the game. He had, like, 30. And he, he created some counterplay. He ended up down a rook for a bishop. But because I spent so much time, and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm winning. Oh, my God, I'm beating a grandmaster. Oh, my God, I'm beating a grandmaster. I, I couldn't handle it. And, and he ended up consolidating and equalizing in an endgame. We, we drew this game, ultimately. Don't overthink. Use the chess thought process. Don't get overly emotional during the games. And when you make a mistake, just take a deep breath. You're going to make mistakes. Stop getting so angry about it. Stop getting so angry about it. Relax. Take a deep breath. It's going to happen. But it's hard. It's, it's not so easy to do. I have my own shortcomings. Do as I say, not as I do. And, you know, your focus will be there. Understand you're working for a brighter future for your chess. Let's move on to the last subject. For the last part of this video, I'm talking about everything outside of the realm of the game, like not the ELO before the after the analysis, big picture. And the first thing that I want to start with is the emotion that you associate with chess, particularly progress and failure, okay? You need to not get too excited, although there are few things better in life than working really hard at chess um, and then getting the ELO, right? Like, I know, I understand, but... Here is the issue with Tilt, and I'm actually going to shout out my wonderful girlfriend, Lucy. She doesn't know I'm putting her in this video, actually. She's in the other uh, side of the house talking to her mom on the phone. So I'm going to tell her after I record this. Love you, honey. So my girlfriend's very good at chess. The problem is that she hates losing. And look at her inconsistency. She logs in on January 25th. She wins a game in six moves because someone hangs a queen, right? That's how it goes. She loses the next five, okay? And like has a bad game, might be distracted. She'll go down. She, she she'll go down in five games. She she gets she'll get upset and she'll just rattle off five games until she wins. Look, she wins a game. She plays until she wins, and then she stops playing for a month. Now, you're not gonna get better if you do this, and she knows that. This isn't like a shocker to her. Uh, but the problem with doing it this way is that. You're too inconsistent. You want results, but you're not ultra dedicated. You have to analyze your own study habits. Like right now, when I'm losing games in Blitz, I'm not that upset because I'm not actively working on my chess. My chess is going to go up and down. Some days I pop off because I drink a good, strong coffee. Some days I, I mean, I play like, you know, my shoes are tied together. Like it, it, it's, it's terrible. So the gaps, you have to understand that chess is a very like, performance and study driven thing and you can't get too upset now how do you stay happy if you're not having success you have to diagnose the issue i mean like is it your white openings do you struggle uh with black do you uh, really play badly uh, uh at five minute and you only should play longer games but you don't have time to play longer games because you're a very successful corporate professional or a or a student or I don't know, a dog. You're just a, you're, you're, you're a really popular dog around town and everybody wants to pet you all the time. You don't have time to study chess. I don't know, okay? Um, I don't discriminate against species. Look, at the end of the day, you need to diagnose your own issue. And the truth is you have to enjoy the game. You have to enjoy the process. If you don't enjoy the game or the process or both, you gotta take a break or stop playing, right? It's like crazy that on a chess video, you have a creator telling you to not play the game anymore. But the truth is, if you hate it, you can't keep coming back to it. I can make a spouse joke here, but I won't. And last but not least, I mean, if we're talking about how, like right now, there's been this big boom of online, right? So it's all different. A lot of you are learning the game online, not playing over the board. Over the board chess is, is very similar. 
Uh, but if you play over the board, there is a very high chance that unless you're at like a small town in like Sweden somewhere and everybody knows each other, um, unless you're like in that situation and you go to a big city in the United States, for example, you're going to play kids. You're going to be all kids, five, six, seven years old, all different walks of life, cultures, ethnicity, nationality. I, I, I don't know, all, all three of those words. Um, and you're probably going to play like six and seven year olds the entire day because kids are really good at chess and they're going to be there. And I mean, you know, you got to have good diet, ultimately good diet, good mindset, good health, all ties in to a healthy thought process and, 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 um, and everything positive that you want for your chess development. Look, if you've made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you. You're amazing. Um, but more than anything else, what I want to say is we're all in this together. Some of us are at different levels of our game or levels of interest, even of our game. Uh, but you need to love this journey of cultivating that information and then enjoying the game because ultimately there are 64 squares. There are 32 pieces and we all just get lost in the wilderness together. So hopefully this video was helpful breaking this all down into the categories. If there's another video out there that's a little bit more abstract that you want me to cover similar to this video, do let me know in the comments below and uh, keep being amazing. All right, let's get to a million soon.